Suhaib disputed, talked, and argued until he got rid of his persecutors. He mounted his camel and sped across the desert. However, the Quraysh sent its hunters to follow him. When they reached him, Suhaib had hardly seen them before facing them and shouting from a near distance, O people of Quraysh, you know that I am the best marksman. By Allah, you cannot reach me before I shoot each of my arrows with my bow. Then I will strike you with my sword until it falls down. Come on, if you like to try. Or if you like, I will tell you where my money is. And so leave me alone. They agreed to take his money, saying, You came to us as a poor wretch. Your money increased in our land, and among us you claimed high rank, and now you want to escape together with your money. He guided them to the place where he had hidden his fortune. Then they left him alone and returned to Mecca. Strangely enough, they believed his words without doubt, without precaution. They did not ask him to prove his honesty, nor did they ask him to swear. This situation granted him a great honor, which he deserves as an honest and truthful man. Alone but happy, Suhaib continued his journey until he reached the Prophet at Cuba. When Suhaib came into view, the Prophet was sitting surrounded by his companions. As soon as the Prophet Pewish saw him, he called to him cheerfully, O Abu Yahya, a profitable sale, a profitable sale. That's how he got his name. Thereupon the glorious verse was revealed. And of mankind is he who sells himself, seeking the pleasure of Allah. And Allah is full of kindness to his slaves. Indeed, Suhaib had paid all his fortune, the fortune he spent all his youth to gather, in return for his faithful soul. He never felt it was an unjust bargain. Money, gold, the whole world, nothing of that sort was worthwhile as long as he kept his faith the sovereignty of his conscience and the determination of his fate. The Prophet loved him very much. Besides being pious and God-fearing, he was a cheerful and jovial person. The Prophet saw him once eating dates when there was inflammation in one of his eyes. The Prophet asked him cheerfully, do you eat dates when there is inflammation in one of your eyes? He answered, what's wrong with that? I eat them with the other eye. He was a generous donor, spending all his stipend from the treasury, Beit al-Mal, in the cause of Allah, helping the needy, aiding the sorrowful, feeding the needy, the orphans, and the captives with the best food. His extreme generosity attracted the attention of Umar, who said to him, I can see you feeding people too much, to the extent that you are spending lavishly. Suhaib answered him, I've heard the Prophet say, the best of you is the one who feeds others. The life of Suhaib was filled with an abundance of merits and great situations. To be chosen by Umar ibn al-Khattab to lead the prayer was another merit to be added. When the commander of the faithful was attacked while leading the Muslims in Fajr prayer and felt his end was coming nearer and nearer, he began to advise his companions. His last words were, let Suhaib lead people in prayer. On that day, Umar chose six of the companions and entrusted them with the choice of the new caliph. The caliph of the Muslims was the one who led the prayers. In those days following the death of the commander of the faithful until the new caliph was chosen, who was to lead the Muslims in prayer? Umar would slow down a thousand times before choosing someone, especially in these moments while his pure soul was passing away to meet Allah. If he chose, then there was no one more eligible than the chosen. He chose Suhaib. He chose him to lead the Muslims in prayer until the next caliph came to carry out his duties. He chose him despite the Roman accent obvious in his language. This choice was a divine blessing upon the pious worshiper Suhaib ibn Sinan. If you want to know about more Sahabas, stay tuned for the next episode. Kindly like and subscribe the channel.